Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. You are going to watch a video where I channel Bob Marley from the afterlife. But I wanted to do an introduction because this is a perfect example of what Above Life Channel and my work as a psychic and a medium and a coach represents. In this session, there is so much good content, energetic connection and quality in the information that is shared. There is one big part of this channeling that is absolutely wrong, completely wrong, so wrong. Or is it? Hmm. You guys know if you watch Above Life Channel that I'm not really into drama. In this particular session, I enter into it with the expectation that there will be some drama. I was under the false impression that Bob Marley was murdered. Because you know I don't Google before I do a session. You know I don't. So I rely upon whatever it is that I know going in. I try to lay that out there for you to let you know. So in the very beginning of this video, you will hear me say, I think I know about Bob Marley that he was murdered with his wife and his son. These things are not accurate. They were not murdered. And I can completely understand when I watch the video back how I got that impression. The first things first, the human mind. I had an expectation. I entered into the channeling with a preconceived notion, which in my mind felt as though it was factual, which means there was no reason to question it, to open myself up to information that was different than what I thought I knew with my mind. This is how psychic Communication can be difficult at times where our own resistance, our own biases, our own belief systems can block us from actually getting accurate information. This is why that muscle of discernment, you knowing you best, you trusting your instincts and being open is so important when you have a psychic session or a psychic reading. So I walked into this session just thinking that was fact. And so when it came up and I talked to him about this life experience, it was such a big part of his life. It actually was an assassination attempt and he was shot. And he described that to me. When I talked to him about his death, he described that to me. That was a huge defining moment in the life of Bob Marley, that assassination attempt, and it changed him forever. And it literally felt like a death. like the end of his life at that point, and then the next section of his life. It was like that was a completion of one cycle of his life, and then the beginning of another cycle where he was different. He's a different man. And so factually, I got things wrong, yes, because I had, I had let my brain step into the session with preconceived ideas, expectations of something that was fact that wasn't. So this is an example of authenticity here at Above Life Channel and me as a psychic and a medium and an empowerment coach. I believe in real, being real and showing you. I don't have the desire to edit my videos or to decide which ones I show you and which ones I don't. I want to show you. I want to be transparent so that you know you know that there is nobody that you should give over your power to your life to, that there's nobody that knows how to live your life better than you do. Better than you do. That's why you have to trust your own discernment and your own feeling about things. So this is real. Yeah, I was wrong. That doesn't mean I suck as a psychic. <laughs> it just means I'm human and I don't edit out my videos, and I don't keep myself in a state of expectation with you as my viewers where I have to be perfect. I don't have to be perfect. Do you have to be perfect? No, I don't want you to be perfect. I want us to recognize that there's humanity here, and 
it's not above life channel is not about my image as a great psychic as a fabulous public image kind of a thing that i'm so great and i'm so hollywood and i'm so whatever it's not about that it's about being real and inspiring your spirit filling you up with hope so that you can live your life and be courageous in doing it and this is real life i hope that you enjoy this channeling session it is a good one and you can tell that when he talks about nearing the end of our video he talks about his death moment and what he's actually describing is that point where he was um, shot and had assassination attempt where he literally felt like he died but what he shares from the energy of it so he shares the physical feeling of the body but he shares the energy of what it felt like to actually transition but the transition did not come at that point it came later on in his life but as he said in his own words it was expected so I want to clear that up for you as you step into this channeling with Bob Marley and I hope you enjoy I hope you enjoy this journey and the full authenticity of the psychic and medium that I am here at above life channel on YouTube hi it's Bridget welcome to above life channel the purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope today we're going to be connecting with Bob Marley in the afterlife so the reason why I'm channeling Bob Marley is because he was on my mind this morning super random at like 5 a.m. and I had thought about channeling him before when I was doing a a session with Cass Elliott and I have no idea why I connected Cass Elliott, like of the mamas and the papas, to Bob Marley. No idea why. No idea. Maybe you know why. Maybe we should ask him why. Put that in the comments below if you know why. What might be connected between Cass Elliott and Bob Marley? All right, so let's get started. Let me be fully transparent and let you know what I think I know about Bob Marley, and which isn't very much. So what I think I know is that his family, okay, so I know he's from Jamaica, obviously. And I know, I think I know that a story about his life was that his family was like murdered, like his, what, his son and his wife or something like that. And, and maybe it was his mom or I don't know. But there was a woman in his life and a young boy that were murdered and some kind of I don't know what the circumstances are around that. It just seems um, it, it's murder. So it's uh, horrible circumstances. And I know that he obviously was a reggae singer. And that's pretty much what I know. Okay. So let's channel Bob Marley and have a conversation. Oh, I'm going to so try not to use your accent. He has an accent. It's thick. And I have a tendency when I feel energy <laughs> to adjust to that and have that kind of dialect. And I so suck at accents. I am not an actress. I don't even play one on YouTube. I can't do accents very well. But it might happen, you guys. And if it does and it annoys you, sorry. All right. Let's get that out, get that out there out in front. All right, Bob. Come on in. I don't know that Bob was his name because it doesn't feel right. Calling him Bob doesn't feel right to me. Come on in, let's see. Okay, now I can, I can hear the steel drums. Kind of energy vibe. You, hi, yeah, nice to meet you. You know who you remind me of? You know who he reminds me of? Michael Beckwith, a little bit. Except his face is more, um, um, Bob Marley's features are stronger, like his lips and his jawline is, is stronger. It's more of a, a feature from what I'm looking at compared to Michael Beck, Beckwith. If you don't know who Michael Beckwith is, he's like a spiritual energy guy teacher kind of thing, I think. You know, Oprah talks to him on her Super Soul Sunday thing. All right, but that's who you remind me of a little bit. He says, oh, thank you. Thank you. All right, so, and I can smell you. He has a scent. <laughs> You smell like cannabis. Yes, you smell like weed. Let's just be honest. You smell like 
medicinal, let's say that. <laughs> you smell like cannabis. There goes monetization for this video, people. All right, that's okay. That's all right, it's totally worth talking to you. All right, so, <laughs> yeah, it's not about the money, is it? And he says, no, it ain't about the money. It can't, it can't, he says, you know what? He says, it never, it never is about the money and it always is about the money. Really? Okay. Yeah, talk to me more about that. He says, I grew up poor. I grew up not having, not having things, you know. And then I got into a position where I had something. And you want to share that, you know, with your family and your friends and people you love. But there are people that want to take advantage of that. And it's something that, uh, it's an evil in society. It corrupts people. You know, money can be there's like this hunger you know like an addiction for it okay so are you talking about your career or are you talking about the tragedy that you experienced in my life in your life i think it applies to both he says it applies to both his energy is it's kind of interesting because it it's kind of mellow and then all of a sudden there's sparks of like la 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 la, la, la like um Mellow and then intense, mellow and then intense. And is that accurate for your life? Yeah. He says, yeah. He said, I've been through a lot. I went through a lot. And um, he's saying, tell the people that I'm reunited with my kin, my kin, his family. He's reunited with his family. Some of you, I guess, would want to know that. His mother is in the afterlife. She's in heaven and she meant a lot to him is what he says. Or she means a lot to me now. I don't know what the deal is with that. My mother means a lot to me. Space now. Hmm, that's interesting. So I'm not sure what the upbringing was like. Um, no role model father is what it feels like. Like I don't think father was around. Um, I had uncles. He's telling me my uncles and stuff. Um, but he says, but there's corruption there. So I don't know if it's direct uncles or people that hung around his family or part of the people that led to the tragedy that he experienced now so was it like political stuff in your country that was the thing because i feel like you you were seeking asylum and i don't feel like you in the u.s were you in the uk i feel like he's in england like britain i spent a lot of time there i had a place there he says yeah i had a place there i had to um he's like i had to hide out he said there were hits on me there were hits on me like the government and the mafia, like he's showing me the good guys and the bad guys. He says, but nobody's really good guys, right? He says, but nobody, how can you be good and want to murder someone? Want to take their life, want to take them away from everything that they know. So wh why would there hits on you? That doesn't even make sense to me. He says, because I'm political. I took, I took a stand politically or I, I don't feel like Something he said was misrepresented. I think he's very, um, it feels political, you guys. That's what I'm gonna say. And he says political. He says, oh, it was political. But politics and money were, um, he says it's not sexy. He says it's not sexy. Politics and money were, it's like a cult, he says, you know, it's like a cult. So, did you believe in God? Did you have a faith? Oh, yeah. He says, oh, yeah. Faith, yeah. He says, faith. But faith, and made, me, faith made me a better man. Is what he's saying? Something like, faith made me to be a better man. It's hard to, I can see him, but I'm not having this like one-on-one -on -one, um Probably because I don't know you very well, maybe, huh? Like I can't totally feel you easily like a human. Um, so I'm getting like information kind of as a, in a box and then I'm feeling it and then you're kind of clarifying and I'm getting bits and pieces of specific things that you say. Okay, so your faith in God made you a better man is what you're saying. Yes, he says yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, He's talking about a drummer or being a drummer. Was he a drummer? I don't know. I see him like. So who did you, who are people that inspired you or who did you look up to? And I'm feeling like the 80s. What is the 80s about? Did he, 
I don't know the timeline of your death or your life, like your career history. I don't know that off the top of my head. I don't know that. Um, but I feel like the 80s. Um, who were you inspired by? You think something about my mom. My mother, the mother, the mother of my child? Women? The love of a good woman? Can melt away many pains. He says, don't make me out to be some good man or some martyr or some, like he doesn't want to be a poster boy for um, the struggle between power between people that have money and people that don't, or people in politics or positions of power, leaders, and people that don't. He doesn't want to be a symbol for that, but he feels like, well, it's too, but it's too late for that. Like he didn't, like he's get, making me feel like his purpose of his life wasn't to be this symbol of this and that, you know, a rise against power or a stand against power or that kind of a thing. Um, He's like, I wasn't trying to be an example. Like I didn't that I didn't know that that's what the outcome of my life would be. Like I didn't start out life thinking that this is what's going to happen or this is what I want to do. He says, you get into a place where you have so much, so many blessings and so much gratitude and you get to do what you love to do and what you're made to do. And then you feel like you just got to help people. You just got to help people. You got to help people. Why would you waste it when you have a voice and people are going to listen? They are listening to you. And that surprises me. That's like, he's like, that blows me away. Like, that's not even like, that's not, that can't, can't even believe that. Not just the lyrics, but the, but the, the power of having like I'm gonna say a platform you know he's like saying being on stage and he could say things and share messages and um, support people who were fighting against injustices and he was he's like I am he's like I'm proud to have have been able to do that but he's like who why wouldn't you why wouldn't you He's like, like, look at in the U.S., like he says, like Martin Luther King and Malcolm X. OK, so I feel like he can identify with both of those figures, the Malcolm X vibe, the very um, like that powerful. Yeah, yeah. Energy of Malcolm X. But then the Martin Luther King kind of mellow at times, a really mellow, like contemplative thinking. That's kind of how it feels with Bob Marley, like he kind of has that contemplative thinking perspective and then he has this yeah yeah you know um and he says it's not about oh yeah okay it is like fighting power it is it is about that it's about fighting power when it when it is unjust when it isn't right when there is a a taking away from people that need and like uh, i'm gonna say hoarding the power but he's making me feel like they hot they hold it really tight for no reason. He's like, there's no good reason for that. There's no good reason to let people suffer when there's so much to go around. He's like, there's so much to go around. Like, all we need is, you know, he says to my man, John, you know, when Lennon says, oh, all we need is love. And that love is the energy of the, he's like, yeah, love is the energy of the universe. And it, it is supposed to unite us. And yet it becomes one of the most powerful resources that we have and the people who are in the place of power are so misled and they don't know that they can't get the love by control and he's like saying strong arming you know harsh um, brutality doesn't solve anything it only makes the divide bigger like the division stronger. It's like, it makes me feel like haves and have nots is what he's showing me, you guys. And he feels very passionate about that. So Bob, what would you say, Mr. Bob Marley, as we're channeling you here at Above Life Channel, um, what would you say to us now? I mean, the world is a pretty big casserole mess right now. There's a lot, I mean, not just a little bit of stuff. There's a lot, 
lot of dividing happening. There's a lot of dividing. Do you have any kind of insight from the afterlife perspective, the highly evolved perspective that you can connect with us for? Can you give us something about that? Is there, can you give us some inspiration? He says, that's on you. It's on the individuals to unite, to come together. That's where power is. If you want to, if you want to make change, you got to accept the fact that it's, it's, it's happening. It's happening. You can't, he's like, you can't be ignorant to change. You can't be ignorant. That doesn't make anything, anything less, less hard to do. That doesn't make it go away. That doesn't make um, you know, just you look the other way so you it doesn't affect you. It affects you. It affects you. And he's like the guilt in your heart for not doing something. You got to live with that. That that blackness in your soul, that dark, thick evil will just grow. And ignorance is evil. Ignorance is evil. You avoid it. Hmm that's a problem he's like that's a problem that's a problem he says i know it's not it's hard to see it it's hard it's hard to see especially when you see with your heart and that's where you see you know there's been too much awakening of consciousness he says there's been too much awakening now you can't close your eye like the heart eye you know kind of thing like you can't stop feeling you can't stop seeing and when you try to physically not see, he's like, you feel it in your heart. That's why there's, that's why there's problems with anxiety and stress and depression. And there's all this energy because there's a war going on in your heart because you are not, your mind is not letting you do something, do something. You have to accept that there's change happening and become part of the positive. He's like, become part of that, the momentum of it. The, the goodness of it. You become part of the goodness. When you step in, you add that goodness. He's like, that's you. That's on you. You got to do what you can to support one another, you know, to help feed those kids, to help people get access to medical care, to help elderly people be able to live without eating dog food. People deserve better lives. And the only way they can have that is by sharing the wealth, not hoarding it, but sharing it. And wealth isn't just about money or your investments. It's not just about that. It's about your time and your love. That's, that's powerful. That's powerful. You can do so much more than you think you can, but you got to accept the fact that there's change. It's happening now. So, and I'm going to say, you guys, it kind of feels like let go or be dragged. Would that be an accurate reflection, Mr. Bob Marley? He said, yes. <laughs> he said, yes. He kind of laughs at me. He's like, yes. Yes, that would be an accurate reflection, Bridget. <laughs> you guys, he has this laugh like, <laughs> I can't, I can't uh, do it right. <laughs> But I've, I'm glad that I've resisted the urge to use your accent because it's kind of interesting. It's like a little bit like what you would expect, like Caribbean accent, but it also sounds English or British almost. It's a different dialect, you guys. All right. So, Bob, would you mind sharing with us about your transition into the afterlife? I think it's really helpful for viewers, anyone that's interested and curious about the afterlife to understand from lots of different perspectives. We, we talk to other, other well-known people, well-known former people, celebrities in the afterlife, and everybody has kind of a little bit of different um, perspective on this. So what's yours, Bob? I'd like to know that. He says, I knew it was coming. It sounds like a hit, you guys. He said, it hit a hit. He said, I knew. It was expected. It was going to happen eventually. Sooner or later, it was going to happen. It feels like he was killed. That's what it feels like. But it also feels like, oh, this is interesting. It feels like, okay, he's not saying this, but it feels like drug dealers or something around. Like, um, not the government, but bad guys. Like a mafia thing or something. Or 
like a dr people involved in drugs and major business of drugs, like not just drug dealers, like a drug deal gone bad, that's not what it was. It feels like big business of drugs and that that threatens other people's livelihoods and that he was a problem. And so he, which I don't understand how that all works together, but maybe you guys do. And like I said, I don't know the history here and I'm sure you can Google it and find out, but you can comment on it below to fill in the blanks for other viewers. Okay, so it was expected. He says, you know, I realized my time was limited when I feel like it was like my mother and my son died. I don't know if he called his wife his mother or his girlfriend his mother or whatever when my mama and my when my when my mother and mother and my child died. I feel like he was something about burying my ashes. Um He feels very iconic, like not just in like pop culture or music, but in his in his um, country, like very iconic, like a symbol for um, what, what would it be like freedom? He says pain, but people uh, mix that in with love. I knew my time was limited after the murders and I wasn't there. If I would have been there, I, would, I knew I was on borrowed time kind of a thing is what he's saying, but he doesn't use all that phrase. It feels very calm now when I'm talking with him. He says, there is such a thing as angels, you know. They did uh, come to me and Kind of like the movie Ghost, you guys. I know that sounds so random, talking to Barb Marley. But that's how he's making me feel like he literally leaves his body. And they, that angels walked with me. He says, they walked with me. They're so beautiful, he says. There's a lot of yellow energy, you guys. It reminds me of Archangel Azrael, um, who is one that I see as a messenger between heaven and earth and sometimes shows up in session when I'm um, doing mediumship. He, it feels like that, but he's showing me yellow it's just so beautiful. So, so much peace, he says, you know, it's just, and he's making me feel like this is really graphic. Oh boy, I don't like to do the drama stuff, you guys. But I will, I'm gonna honor what you're sharing, Bob, but it's making me feel like he's bleeding, like I can feel it, like, I almost feel like I'm laying down and I can feel the, oh, it's just, I'm sorry, guys, I know it's graphic, but I can feel the blood, it's just, it's everywhere. I can just feel it like I just know. And it's warm. It's weird because it's warm. It's all matted. It's like warm and I can feel it. Like it's going down my neck and it's, I can feel it. And he says, peaceful. Like, so his transition felt very peaceful. And he says, expected. You know, it was expected. I knew I was going to die, but I didn't. It feels like gunshots, you guys. That's what it feels like. There's blood just... Oh I can't tell where he was. I almost see like a kind of like apartment row house kind of a thing with brick on the front of it and like a gate in the front and a street. And then I see... Like I'm trying to tell if he's in a country like in the UK or England or US. I don't know. Guys, maybe he was in the US. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And... Jamaica, I don't feel like he was in Jamaica though. I don't feel like that. I feel like it was in the UK. Unless there was attempts. Maybe there was attempts before. I feel like it's so disrespectful to ask, to talk to you about this. He's like, it's okay. It's okay. You asked about the transition, how it felt, and it felt like peace said, I didn't question my life or the choices I made. I didn't feel any kind of remorse or loss or 
fear. It was just, it was just peace. So can you talk a little bit about timing so that people who are listening to this can understand that too, the timing of death? Like, was it your time to go or how does that work? Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Give us some insight about the timing of someone's death. He says, I can speak for me. It wasn't planned, but I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. He says, I knew it was coming. And there's not much can be done about that. And it's kind of making me feel like he's on this trajectory that that would be the result. He says, I couldn't see myself as an old man, not after my family died. I couldn't see that. It surprises me how much life can be worth. One life, my life, was worth both of theirs. I feel like there were three people. I feel like there were two people that died, the woman and the, the son, and then there was somebody else that was there, but I don't know if they were hurt or they didn't actually die or they're not connected. If you guys know, put that in the comments below. Like he says, um, when that happened, I knew that my life was short. Is it because of anger or your feelings or your emotions? Like, were you depressed or what? Why, well, how did you know that your life was going to be short? So you didn't know when you were born and as you were a teenager and stuff that your life was going to be short. You didn't have that kind of a sense. Not really. He says, not really. I wouldn't say I knew. I knew that. I just, I did feel like every day was a gift. You know, every day was like a blessing. Like I did appreciate life. I did appreciate life. I appreciated it. And then after your family died, then what did it, what changed? And there's this incredible depression, you guys. I feel this just really heavy energy. He says, I was angry. I was angry. It changed me. He says, it changed me. I was angry. I was angry. He says, but you can't, it's hard to overcome that bitterness. It's got this taste and you just, it's hard to overcome that, but you have to choose love. He's like, you have to choose love because then they win. Then their deaths are for nothing. There's no, I don't want them to die in vain. So I did my de best to overcome that pain. But it was a part of me, you know, it, it, it was eating me up. It changed me. And I knew it was only a matter of time because that should have been me. I should have been there with them. It would have been easier in so many ways if I did. But you can't, I couldn't let them win, you know. I had some more things I needed to do. I guess, you know, I, I didn't, I can't say that I knew that at the time that I had more life to, to be living or be doing, but there had to have been some bigger meaning or purpose. There had to have been a reason for me to still be here, to not be there at that time. There had to have been a bigger purpose. I'm not going to waste life. I was not going to waste anything. So as far as timing, it's, you know, it's God's time. It's God's time. That, that's how, that's how I would say, say it. So when you say God, you're talking from the perspective of a human, not from an afterlife, all-knowing spirit, right? He says, God is whatever you think God is, whether that is universal consciousness or universal love, it really boils down to love. It really does. Love and peace. Those two things together, that's, that's God. That's God. 
But whether you believe that it's a human or someone that's a leadership energy that you, you got to believe that for yourself, that's fine. That's fine. People should be able to let people believe what they need to believe in order to get through life in a way that they can be happy and they can see that there's all this support and generosity and, and kinship that flows from our souls and our hearts to, to human life you know to to human to human but it's from our soul and from our heart and uh, and that way that's god that's god that's what i would say you guys i can see a cross around his neck so i can feel that that devotion that faith i'll say faith and devotion so and i respect that energy vibration he feels he does feel christian like i mean i guess if i was going to say, I don't know, I really am not super into religion. I think all, a variety of religions are, you know, just expressions and creative and beautiful and that kind of thing. So, all right. It's not my jam though. He kind of laughs. He goes, ha. he goes, yeah, you work for God and you're I'm like, I know, I know. Universe, love, peace, that kind of thing. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, Bob Marley from the afterlife. And thank you here at Above Life Channel. The purpose is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Remember, this is your life. So live it. Just live it. Thank you so much for watching and for being here at Above Life Channel.